Right, hello and welcome to another expert interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by John Hall, who is the founder and CEO of Influence and Company, and also the author of the book Top of Mind, or to give it its full title, Top of Mind, Use Content to Unleash Your Influence and Engage Those Who Matter to You. Okay, so I wanted to talk to John. It's a bit mouthful when you put the whole tagline in. <laughs> it is. It is. I'll have to talk to my publisher about that. <laughs> yeah, but, it's, but it's a great and pertinent book because it talks about how to use content to influence and, and, uh, and connect with people uh, and engage, as you say in your time, engage with those that mas- matter to you. So, John, there's been a lot of talk over the last number of years about content marketing, et cetera. Give, it, give me your your perspective on it i mean just on the the path of it i mean i think i think that content marketing is kind of this funny uh, industry that people think just came about but it's been around for years i mean right. w- whether you go back to caveman time of writing on um, stone tabs or uh john deere in the early 1900s doing their magazine content marketing has been around for forever um however it's just got popular because the way marketing has been looked at recently is about earning trust and adding more value for the customer than usual. Um, and it's shifting away from a lot of the traditional advertising ways and going towards more uh, educational authenticity, uh, ways to engage audiences a lot better. Uh, and content marketing is very, very, uh, well, it's pretty much at the forefront of all of that. And so for me, content marketing is still, even though people say there's a ton of content out there, you've heard of the term content shock and different things like that. And in reality is that um, content marketing is only going to go up from here. It's just going to change in different ways, whether it's uh, changing distribution of it uh, or the format, but it, but it's here to stay and then grow on. Yeah. So, okay. So on, on that point, right. So there's a lot of content out there and, you know, people are producing content almost to the point where sometimes you wonder, is everybody talking and nobody listening? So is everybody producing content and nobody's actually um, reading it? How do you ensure that your content strategy just doesn't add to the noise, but really cuts through the noise? Well, there's a couple of things. One, uh, you have to make it truly valuable and engaging. I was just talking to a, uh, a local marketer here and he was saying oh well i'm just going to repurpose this content here and it should work i'm like no no it's uh, you're repurposing uh from a place where they're reading there and they're they're used to that content and you're not adding any more value than than that original source and so i i'd say the first step is to actually look at how you're engaging them i i call it idea content at least from our uh strategy and and it's i for uh, is it industry leading uh d is it data driven uh, e, is it either emotional or educational? Or A, is, is it amusing? And so obviously you can tell that spells out idea. Mm-hmm. But uh, the reason why I landed on that is because those are all the valuable t- uh, traits of content that we look into our content strategy and say, hey, is it one of these or all of these or two of these? Uh, it's got to be valuable. If it doesn't fit into c- that that kind of realm or guideline, then we shouldn't be producing it. So you have that factor. You have um, distribution is another key, is that uh, I use the example of how I hate South by Southwest, but I'll still go to it this year. Well, why? Because it's just a bunch of noise. It's a mess uh, mm-hmm. down there. However, <laughs> what I've learned to do is curate, make sure that I'm in front of the right people at the right time down there. And I'll go down there, probably go to three or four events, and it'll be well worth the trip. I'll get exact, get in front of exactly who I want to compared to two or three years ago when I go down there and, and just bar crawl and you're just noise down there. And so uh, I would say that uh, distribution is key, making sure that you're creating the channels and the amplification um, lines so that your content is being seen by the right people at the right time. Yeah, because it seems to me that um, what you're outlining there is basically have a proper, well thought out strategy as opposed to, you know, and perhaps over the last while we've seen people where they think, if I throw up a blog and throw out content, you know, I've got my content marketing going and inbound leads will come to me. And meanwhile, the salespeople are sitting back there with their feet up saying, OK, where's all those lovely inbound leads coming for coming from? But what you're saying is you have to work hard at it and have an actual well thought out strategy for it to work. It's just it's not going to work just by throwing content up there, right? Yeah, I mean, you have to distribute well and you have to leverage the content. I was speaking to a uh, a company that uh, they actually just re- they raised about a t- in total almost four hundred million dollars, and I was going over and looking at their content strategy and different things they're doing, 
and they're creating content and, and it's great from that aspect, but they weren't leveraging the content. So they weren't seeing the ROI from the content because they were only getting one small part of the, of, of the value and, and it's the content creation and just putting it out there. Um, their sales team wasn't using the content. Uh, they didn't have a plan in place to uh, what I call content triggering is that, you know, your, your sales team is a, is a key to content triggering. They're the ones to, on the front lines talking to your customers. You're one of your most valuable, one of the most valuable assets um, you could argue is your employees, but, um, but they're the ones who are talking, listening to them, understanding their sales barriers, understanding the challenges that they're having. And you, you want to develop a content strategy around that. And so you need to make sure that your salespeople and people who are dealing with your target audience are engaging them, listening, uh, hearing their challenges, communicating to the content team. Then they're developing that content. And then it's being distributed effectively to those types of customers. And so that's just one distribution line. There's obviously a ton of, of other ones that you can, um, or there's a ton of other ones that you can get into as well. But that's a clear example to me is that there's just a lot of companies that don't leverage the, uh, the content the way they should. And that's how you're going to maximize ROI. Yeah, and that's a that's an excellent point. Again, it points to that kind of disconnect sometimes between sales and marketing. Um, as you say, uh, you know, if you're going to have an effective content marketing strategy, it should be driven by the needs of your customers and what resonates and valuable to your customers. And obviously your salespeople are the conduit to that. Uh, here's another interesting thing that you touched on earlier, and I know it's uh, in the book, it's a big part of it, is this idea of being authentic, right? Um, mm -hmm. So how do, how do you create, uh, I mean, it sounds, create authenticity almost sounds inauthentic in itself, but how do you <laughs> communicate, how do you, how do you really connect on an authentic level with your, with your readers and your prospects and customers? Well, I mean, you, you can create authenticity just because a lot of times it's just, um, it's just showcase or just being yourself. And like authenticity is a factor where, um, you have to embrace it and you have to, and honestly, it's been more fun for me to to do it. I used to be very kind of act what they want, how they want me to act. And uh, it's almost like back to high school and grade school, like act cool and try and be like, all right, well, this is what they the, the, what they want to see. Um, it, this comes up a lot of times with personal branding. There's a lot of branding out there right now that there's people acting a character mm -hmm. and it's doing OK with them. But honestly, even the most successful ones that it, it helps with their content um, are miserable because it's just not themselves. And they're like, I'm playing a character um, that I, it's just not me. And so I think for me, um, it's a factor of harness, you know, what is authentic and engaging about yourself as a person? For me, one of the things that I kind of identified was like family and, and my friends. Uh, a lot of times in my content, I'll, um, I'll use examples from them and it, it allows people to relate to me. I mean, when I wrote an article a couple of years ago about parenting and how it was really a struggle for me, on how to jump back in it after uh, I, I kind of disconnected from the world to, to see my um, my second child born. There was a lot of people that engaged with that piece. Was it about content marketing? No. Was it about thought leadership? No. PR? No. Um, but I was simply wanting to share an experience I was going through to, to add value and help out the people around me. And, and it had a very, very warm reception. We actually had, I think, one or two clients that came from that piece. I did not even intend for that to happen, to get an ROI on that uh, piece. It actually did pretty well. Yeah, I think that's a that's a that's a great point about um trying to be yourself because yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of talk out there about personal branding and I think some of it has gotten lost where as you say where people are almost creating, you know, as you say creating characters and then living out a different uh, a different persona online. And I think that's another point that uh, you bring up in your book is around the consistency, right? So if you're really creating a character and you're somewhat of a chameleon, right? Um I I would say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> then it's really hard to be consistent, right? Because you are you're you have to work really hard at making sure you stay in that character. Whereas if you're authentic, consistency kind of flows naturally, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's like if you're overthinking things all the time and thinking like, I need to say this, I need to say that. And I'm like, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, you go out and uh, are 100% 100 sure. transparent about everything. Uh, I think that there's just a difference from trying to be as real as you can with people. And like, that's something that I realized, honestly, in my own sales approach and like how I created opportunity for the company. When we started the company, I was just like, need to get the sale, need to do what, um, you know, what we can do. Okay, here, I'm going to pitch based on what our capabilities are. What I learned is that just from the, the authenticity that goes into um, sales and content, 
I, I would look at, you know, let, what's actually valuable for them. And a lot of times I'll tell people, hey, our service is not the best for you. I know you read this article. You came to us. You really need this. Let me shoot an intro. And they're like, don't you want the business? I'm like, no, nah, of course I will, I will want the business. But uh, the best thing for you is to go with this service rather than us because I know they can, they're can. they the best at what you're looking for as compared to what we're the best at. And that always comes back. I mean, that's sure. a level of authenticity and truthfulness that if you look out for other people's best interests and you're truly, and, and that's for me is that like, I truly want to help others. And so that authentic part of me um, needs to showcase, it needs to shine. And I need to not let ego and other things get in the way or selfishness uh, occasionally when it can. Um, and, and that shows through content, through sales, through relationships, and it's super valuable. So apart from obviously starting off and buying your book, uh, what are some of the things uh, an organization or people should look at if they want to start a really good, uh, successful content marketing outreach? I would be talking to people around you. Like I, I love a good book and you know, you can read my book and kind of engage with that. But um, what I've learned about books is that they, they'll spark ideas and they'll get you kind of thinking in different ways, but everything is situational to me. Um, your content strategy might be different than the, the, like somebody might write a book and, and they'd have a ton of B2B clients and you're a B2C company. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that uh, first step, you know, obviously read and, and, you know, whether it's a book or articles, I mean, you can read our blog at, the influence of co, uh, or influence co.com, the, the blog there, or like HubSpot has a good blog. There's a lot of good ones that are around this content. Um, but what I would do is I would just look at, um, I would look at those things. And then I would also look at, uh, look at, you know, your friends and people that you have connections to that have good content strategies that have backgrounds say, what did you do? How did you do it? What vendors did you use? Uh, talk through that with them. And then, um, think about your, your, uh, personal, situation and, and what stands out about your company because right. ultimately with content you want the goal is to differentiate yourself as well as engage mm -hmm. so if you are thinking well, how can we be differentiated what is unique about us that can add value to the content the type of content uh what makes most sense and then that could help you stand out and develop a strategy that is not only effective but unique to you Excellent. So when you were writing the book, I um, mean, you obviously had these ideas and they're based on experience, but was there anything that um, came out of the book that kind of surprised you? Any conclusions that you came to? Oh, it's it, honestly, it's like going through it. It's just crazy how much personal, how much this stuff can affect your personal life. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't, and initially going into the, to the book, I didn't think about that. But for me, like uh, what makes me a, a better marketer, a leader, an entrepreneur, a person is uh, how I engage across the board, not just in my professional life, but in my personal life. Mm -hmm. What I learned about habits is that it's very hard to create habits in your professional life and um, and not in your personal life to create real habits. Right. And that's what in the book you'll kind of learn that is that uh, I learned with different things with engagement is that like not only should I um, be listening to target audiences, but I should be listening to friends. I should be paying attention to what engages them. I think I used to be one of those people that like s tells the same story like 20 times in a row. And I, th I think it's funny, but it's not and, like, everybody's got a friend like that. I was like, man, everybody's got a friend like that. I'm like, wait a minute. I am that friend. <laughs> and so I think that, uh, things like that, um, were, it's, it was like, I've been a lot happier when, after I wrote the book and I kind of was like, wow, like, I, I I need to not only make myself better on the professional end of how I'm engaging people, but also on my personal side of things of how I'm communicating with people. And it's worked out uh, and made me a lot happier and successful in my personal life. Yeah. And it's probably helped, obviously, as you said earlier, helped uh, for you to project your authentic voice out to the, the marketplace as well. Right. And reflect the brand, your, you know, your company's brand in that way, too. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay, so we're just uh, we're bumping up against the uh, the end here. What I wanted to do quickly was give you an opportunity to tell the audience a little bit more about yourself, your company, and how they can contact you and find out more about you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I would. You know, my name's obviously John Hall, and the Twitter's at John Hall. LinkedIn. Uh, just type in LinkedIn, John Hall. It shouldn't be. I mean. I would hope if my company is good at, <laughs> at what we do, you, you should be able to find me pretty easily. Um, the company is uh, is influenceandco.com. Uh, so check it out there. Um, I mean, my email is john at influenceandco.com. And so I'm a little out of operations these days. So I don't know how much help I could be if you have an operational question. But uh, if you want to just say, hey, can you direct me to the right person or the right place? Happy to do so. Um, and check out the book. It's a it's a good book, uh, top of mind, and uh, and hopefully get some value out of it. But, um, but yeah, those are the best ways to contact or learn more. 
Great. Uh, so thanks, John. This is a great conversation. The book, again, is top of mind. Use content to unleash your influence and engage those who matter to you. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you for another expert interview real soon.